Hello everyone, hope you're well. Welcome to another video about Immigration New Zealand's Green List. So in this video, I'm going to try and break it down into three sections. So section one, I'll be explaining the benefits of the Green List. Section two, I'll be explaining the process to use the Green List. And section three, it'll be about how to qualify for the Green List. So let's have a look at section one, the benefits of New Zealand's Green List. So the first benefit is obviously you can apply for a green list residence visa as long as you meet all the criteria. And one of the main criteria is New Zealand employment or an offer of employment. So this is not a visa you can apply from offshore with no job in New Zealand. It's only for people who already have employment or an offer of employment. And most people who apply for the green list residence visa will be already in New Zealand working. Uh, the other benefit is if you're applying for a accredited employer work visa. This includes people who are outside New Zealand and who have got a job offer. Uh, what it means is your employer does not need to advertise for New Zealanders first. So for someone who's not on the green list, the employer will need to advertise for 14 days and try and recruit a New Zealander first. But if you're on that green list and you meet the requirements of the green list, your employer doesn't need to advertise for 14 days you're not at risk of a New Zealander uh, swiping your job and it just makes the process so much easier because when an employer wants to employ a migrant, they have to do accreditation, they have to do a job check process, they have to do a lot of different steps. By meeting the requirements of the green list, it just means there's one less hassle, one less, one less problem for the employer to do because they do not need to advertise for 14 days for New Zealanders first. So those are the two main benefits of the green list. Let's go on to the process. So for most people, they'll be following this process here. Step one, you get a job offer from an accredited employer. Your employer proceeds and completes a job check process with Immigration New Zealand. Uh, once the employer has completed that job check process, a job token will be issued. And at that point, you can then apply for an accredited employer work visa. So the accredited employer work visa is not just a visa you can go to the Immigration New Zealand website and apply for yourself online. You can't just go and apply. You need to have a job token first. So what happens is when you get a job token, it contains a link. You click on the link and then you can actually go and start an application. Without a job token, you can't start the application. You can't actually do anything. So in that case, if your employer doesn't, can't, doesn't know how to get a job token for you, what you need to do is you should hire a licensed immigration advisor to actually help the employer do that process so you can actually get that job token because you can't just go and get the job token yourself and then without the job token, you can't even apply for a visa. So that's a bit of a tricky thing there. Um, okay, and then step four, you do your visa application. Hopefully everything's okay. Um, if you make small mistakes on the application, they should be fixable. It's probably not a big problem. If you make big mistakes on the application, you probably risk it getting refused. If your employer thinks you can't get a visa, um, they're very likely to cancel the job offer. And that's especially true if your visa is refused. But when you're doing a visa application, small mistakes are okay. If you make big mistakes, you really risk um, getting it refused. Um, if you have concerns about getting your visa approved, then again, you should hire a licensed immigration advisor so there's no problems. And so you can get your visa quickly and you can get to New Zealand and start work as soon as possible because probably your employer doesn't want to have to wait too long. If an employer is offering a job to someone who's outside New Zealand, they're probably very keen and they probably really need a worker because most employees want someone who's already in New Zealand. So if you're outside New Zealand and you've been offered a job, you need to try and get to New Zealand on a work visa as soon as possible. Anyway, once you've done that step four and you're working in New Zealand, is dependent on you meeting the residence criteria, you can then go and apply for a Greenlist residence visa. Again, you have to meet all the criteria before you can apply and there's different criteria depending on your job and your individual situation. Anyway, just to quickly break that down again, step one, you need your job offer from an accredited employer. Your employer goes and completes their job check process with Immigration New Zealand. Get your job token, then you can use the link on that token to prepare your application and submit it. 
and hopefully with, you get your visa approved without any problems and then you fly to New Zealand, start working. And then later on, once you meet the requ uh, requirements and criteria, you may want to apply for the Green List Residence Visa. Okay, qualifying for the Green List. Um, this is a tricky one, a little bit, a little bit tricky. So it's not just about your job being on the green list. You'll see an example here on the screen. On the left side, you can see engineering, the category. Then in the middle, you can see all the different types of engineering roles that fall into that category. And then on the right side, you'll actually see the requirements to actually meet, uh, to actually meet the green list. So it's not just enough for your job to be on the green list. You also need to meet those requirements on the right-hand side. So I'm using engineers as an example. If you're an engineer, you need to meet one of the following requirements. So if you look on the right-hand side, you are seeing four different requirements. So the first requirement is a Washington Accord accredited engineering degree. Second requirement is a Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, NZQA Level 8 or a qualification at NZQA level 7 or higher with a letter from Engineering New Zealand, or New Zealand registration as a chartered professional engineer by Engineering New Zealand. So you only need to meet one of those requirements, but you need to meet it exactly. So for, if you have a, for example, if you have a Washington Accord accredited degree, you need to make sure it's actually um, accredited. You need to make sure that your country and institution sign the Washington Accord before you completed your degree for example if you completed your degree in 2017 and your university or the country did not get involved with the washington accord until 2018 well you're not your qualification is not going to meet that criteria um, second example is a bachelor of engineering with honors so specifically it must be a bachelor of engineering with honors it must actually say that exactly on the degree and it needs to be accessed by NZQA at level 8, or it needs to be exempt from assessment um, by NZQA. So there's actually an ex uh, exemption list for qualifications. The qualification will need to either be on that list, or you need to send it away to NZQA for a qualification assessment. Um, for the third option, you've got a qualification at NZQA level 7 or higher, and you need to have a letter from Engineering New Zealand, so you need to apply for uh, to Engineering New Zealand to get that letter. And then a fourth example is you could just hold New Zealand registration as a professional engineer. So you just need to meet one of those, only one of those four requirements, but you need to meet it exactly. And you need to re read the requirement word by word and meet it exactly. Um, I'll show you another example. Um, okay, for this one, we have trades. We have electrician. You need New Zealand registration as an electrician or a limited certificate as an electrician from the Electrical Workers Registration Board. So you need to meet that exact uh, criteria. It's not enough just to be an electrician. Again, you need to meet the requirements on the right-hand side, and that would mean you actually meet the requirements of the green list. So I hope that's clear. So when you go to the green list, you go on the left-hand side, then the middle column, you find your job. And then on the right-hand side, you need to meet that criteria exactly. If you don't meet that criteria, then you can't apply for um, a Green List Residence Visa and you can't um, apply for an accredited employer work visa without your employer advertising first. Anyway, I hope this short video was clear. If it was uh, useful or helpful and not too boring, um, please like, share and subscribe and I'll be posting more videos with more information about New Zealand's green list, about work visas, about student visas, about other immigration policy, and just anything else that I think will be helpful. Anyway, I will see you all later.